It's me, Matthias Hombauer, and this is the How to Become a Rockstar Photographer podcast, episode 57. And shooting very often to the point where your very excellent work not be ignored. Show me the way out. You'll get access all area to the best music photographers on the planet, where they share their secrets, successes, and crazy stories from their rock star life. Join me on this journey kickstart your concert photography career and start living a dream right now. Welcome everybody to a new episode of the How to Become a Rockstar Photographer podcast. Today's guest is New York-based photographer and the deputy photo editor at Rolling Stone, Sasha Lecker. In this interview, Sasha will reveal his best tips on how to get your work published in one of the most prestigious music magazines, and we will talk about the future of our industry. Find Sasha's work, his favorite camera equipment, and much more on his show notes page at hdbarb.com slash Sasha Lecker. So thanks so much for being a guest today, Sasha. How are you doing? Oh, I'm... I'm great. Uh, thanks for having me. Sorry You're if welcome. I sound a little tired. Um, it's just, 8, 8 a.m. in New York, right? It's 8 a.m., which is not its not that early for me. I'm usually in the office already. Oh, wow. Um, but we actually uh, closed the next issue uh, last night. Ah, okay. So it was uh, a lot of late nights all in a row. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about this in a second. So both of your parents are still fashion photographers. Indeed, and uh, yeah. yeah. How did their job influence you to become a photographer too? <laughs> well, uh, I could, the, the way to, I'd love to answer that is basically I try to avoid uh, photography as much <laughs> okay. as possible because it was something <laughs> that my parents did, you know. Uh, I see. Um, and I tried to basically find my own path, but, uh, mm -hmm. which led me, um, straight back to, uh, being involved in photography in my, in my work. Mm. Cool. So you've have seen it as kind of an uncool job to be a photographer <laughs> because your parents are doing it. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say uncool. I just, <clears throat> it's, it's more of a, you know, sort of like a, a rejection of, um, mm. Of, of what of what your you know what your your parents do and so right. on it's, but uh i mean i did end up working with them quite a lot um, mm. uh even in uh, even shooting fashion shows and doing printing for my mm -hmm. for my my parents and and i also always took uh took photos as a kid from a very early age from age 12 on i shot mm -hmm. my own uh pictures and processed my own film and did my own printing. Um, so it was just, it was, it didn't feel like something that would be a job for me, but just as okay. a personal means of, uh, expression. Cool. So this means you were always interested kind of in photography in your, uh, teen years and then did some, some stuff like fashion. So, so when did you start shooting music? I have to tell you, um, as much as the, I've always been going to shows, I only started shooting music when I got to Rolling Stone. So, okay. you know, I mean, and that's, so for me, that's quite late for most, mm -hmm. compared to most people, it's extremely late. Um, so it was only, um, you know, like 11 years ago. Cool. Yeah. So let's probably start from the beginning with your career path. So you not started out studying photography or whatever, but uh, you started something different. Yes, and uh, from uh, from what I understand, you 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 might relate very well to this. Um, you having um, a PhD, right. uh, as I understand, <laughs> I, and and uh, I I I was my path was taking me in a different way. It was I was uh, doing some advanced um, mathematics and oh wow um, and computer science, which at the time okay. in in uh, basically included. Um, writing um uh code um uh, mm -hmm. and uh, uh and this is before the internet <laughs> and before html and all that um 
But um, would you have considered you as a kind of nerd, quote unquote? <laughs> me, absolutely, one hundred percent. Okay, but but this was not the career path you you went after. No, uh, what happened? Um, you know, in university, I I think I took on too much of that. It was a a, a double major, double concentration. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, and so I just was piling it on and, and, uh, I didn't necessarily lose interest, but, uh, I think it was just too much. Um, it was a bit too heavy for me possibly. And so, mm. uh, I ended up finishing with a degree in art history, um, okay. and which led me to working at, a at a museum at the Guggenheim museum, Wow, which then, Not bad. Uh, yeah, it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, And then just by chance, uh, a random chance offer to work at a, at, at a magazine, at Newsweek magazine mm. in the photo department mm. and, uh, with zero experience, um, in magazine publishing, um, uh, basically started me on a new path. Mm -hmm. and, awesome. Uh, yeah. So how, how did this feel in the beginning? I mean, if you're starting something totally new from scratch and you have you know, no experience. And uh, I mean, Newsweek is a, it's a huge publication. So it was, and I, it was a, at the time, I mean, it was, uh, magazines were still doing pretty well. It was, uh, mm. it was the um, mid nineties. And, but although it was, you know, I, I think that it was magazines had been on the, on the, uh, downward kind of, uh, uh, slow for, yes, for, <laughs> for a while, but it was still kind of, it still felt like the old days where you had money to, assigned photographers and mm. the staff was quite big at the time. So there was a lot of people to learn from. I started as a kind of low, lower level, um, person in that department. Uh, but then, uh, quickly rose up, uh, to eventually be a photo editor there. Mm. Yeah. So what was your job exactly there? Selecting photos for the magazine? Each se uh, each section of the magazine would have their own uh, photo editor and their own mm -hmm. researcher, and okay. so for a long time I had um, I had been a researcher, uh, uh, and then when I got promoted to photo editor, I, I, I uh, it was the uh, it was the section of the magazine called Society, which ended up uh, covering you know sports, um, mm -hmm. music. It was anything that was in the culture that wasn't wasn't basically that very newsy although i did do a lot of news uh as well um i used to cover the national affairs section too um so yeah it was uh the the, the, the editors that were there at the time were were fairly legendary and so mm. uh it was a great place to to sort of learn Mm. So just that I understand it correctly, a researcher in this case means... Uh, uh, I apologize, you, yeah. I, it, you're it, researching articles and uh, stories and for the magazine. A, a, photo, a photo researcher in, um, in that sense actually would, uh, would research um, available photos mm -hmm. uh, that existed already, you know. And, uh, okay, and, so you go uh, to Getty or some other image uh, stock library yeah so and photos. at the time you know it was a different sort of way to to use those sources um but also um but as an editor there that's they would normally make assignments um as well to uh uh to uh to get the art for the story um mm. at the time you know we uh for for you know to to reach these agencies uh it was very bizarre um Because uh, we actually had, you had to use a fax machine and uh, actually get mm -hmm. on the phone because this is, uh, <laughs> I mean, there was emails, but not everyone had emails there. Um, and so we did sometimes even have to go to like the Getty office or to SIPA or to Sigma mm -hmm. and look through the files like specifically rather than just, you know, browsing. Yeah. Then Google on, or go on Google. And so it was, uh, it, it was a great place to learn that kind of, uh, mm. that, that ability because you, you also had to sort of be aware of who would have the kind of images you were looking for. Mm. Uh, this might be a relevant point to other questions later that you might have. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's awesome. I was always wondering when I was back a researcher, how they did it, uh, before. Cause nowadays you just, uh, 
have these uh, dedicated uh, pages where you just can download all the research papers. But uh, before, like 20, 30 years ago, you have to go to the library or have yes. to to send them from the other lab or whatever so i know <laughs> i mean and it's the only benefit of like being as old as i am now because i, I like have that that but you're not that, that old right i'm kind of old <laughs> 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 i i i have to say um it's it i one of my favorite things is sort of uh, is is was always researching and mm. and and the, the 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 act of um of discovery and and finding uh, even the most unique kind of uh, image that we that was required, um, uh, and so and now that everything's online, it's it, that those skills still help me find things that don't mm. necessarily exist in in online I databases. See. I see, I see. And then you ended up being the deputy photo editor at Rolling Stone magazine. Yeah. Um, so t- that was also by accident, not by accident, but uh, by it was. It was by luck, I think. Um, mm-hmm. um, I had uh, uh, left had since left Newsweek and was working at a at some business magazines, um, which creatively were not as interesting. Although I, I really enjoyed the time there, and it was also it was just me being in charge uh, there. Uh, but uh, Rolling Stone at the time was uh, looking for someone to. In the fo- for someone in the photo department to dedicate mm-hmm. um, uh, entirely their time to research and to assign work, uh, act as photo editor for uh, the more newsy features that they do. That is to say, not not the celebrity and uh, music coverage. Mm-hmm. And that had been my experience from Newsweek. Uh, the Newsweek uh, photo director had recommended me uh, to Rolling Stone. And, um, that's how I got in there. I mean, I was for a long time there, uh, sort of, a a, a sort of an odd man out, uh, member of the photo department. Cause mm-hmm. I kind of had my own, uh, my own kind of section to, to work on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for how long have you been now with Rolling Stone? Um, almost 11 years. I, mm-hmm. uh, you know the, the magazines the magazine business has had a really rough uh time the last you know th- those those last 11 years have right. been kind of rough and um and so during that time with the staff the photo department staff which was when i was there when i first started uh, seven people uh now are uh is 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 basically just just me <laughs> Oh wow! So as of yesterday, <laughs> okay. Actually, my uh, the creative director um, that I work under uh, is is becoming sort of more important in in uh, in the in the bigger kind of corporate structure uh, mm-hmm. in the company that bought Rolling Stone. So it's still being planned and figured out how it's going to work. But uh, for the next couple of weeks, it's just me, <laughs> which wow. is why I'm so tired as well, because uh, yeah, I can imagine. We, we, um, we've recently relaunched um, the magazine uh, as a monthly and it's back to being a larger folio size and mm. on a, a bigger format. So it's uh it is kind of exciting time and there's a lot more room for photography, but there's a lot, there's so much more to do. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I've, I've just been around the clock kind of in the office. Mm, Wow. So maybe you can uh, touch base on how your job changed in the last years. As you said, as, as you were starting, there were seven people. So did you have your, uh, your dedicated work, like only researching the photos and now you're in charge of, what exactly doing everything well what i what, how it started was uh we do a lot of um a lot of news coverage and long form journalism feature mm-hmm. writing and i would those are the stories i would work on whether it's assigning photographers to shoot portraits or mm-hmm. to um be embedded with a military unit in afghanistan or um or just uh send a photographer to 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 cover a town that's uh, blocking, uh, you know, the like f- the big uh, oil companies from mm. f- from fracking on their land, and you know, and um, 
but at the same time, it's also being very well, uh, being aware of what's being shot um, in uh, from news sources and being able to reach uh, research what might be available um, in politics, um, in general news, and um, you know overseas, etc. And so uh, that's how it started. Um, and the, as as time went on and we had to lose some staff, I, I took on other duties um, mm. as everyone else did. And I ended up doing a lot more work on, on the music uh, side of things and celebrity side of things and making assignments there and researching images as well. Um, and, and this is uh, also what got you started as a concert photographer then? Yeah. I mean, pretty early on, I, I, uh, you know, there was, uh, if, if, you know, if there was an artist coming through town or, um, and doing a show and we needed some, some images and, uh, and, uh, sometimes it would be offered to me, like, why don't you, why don't you go shoot this? You know, mm -hmm. um, cause I had expressed interest and, um, I think where the quality of my work makes sense to, 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 for me to do it, that's when, that's when it, it, it happens. I mean, like very early on I had shot, uh, uh, like the, I shot, shot foals behind the scenes. Uh, yeah. And, I've um, heard the story and I saw the picture, oh, the ones cool. where Giannis is jumping. Oh, uh, that's a different, that's, that was later on. I think when, okay. when I first got there, um, um, when I first got there, uh, we had named the, them a band to watch, and, and mm -hmm. um, I ended up uh, with my wife in London, and, and they were playing, and so I, I called them and said, "You know, may I come shoot the show?" And they they gave me all access. Um, I think because of the the story we were doing, mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of a a blast of a night. Um, when the also early on, the Black Keys came through, and we were doing. Um, we used to do a page called On the Road, uh, which we never really had a budget to actually send someone on the road <laughs> for a long time. But we would do is when they were in town, follow them around for a day and a half, a couple of days. Mm. So we got some variety of images. And so I got to shoot them. And, um, you know, and, the, and you know, so when, it, whenever there was a, a, a big artist in town, um, I might get to shoot, might be someone else. Um, but then uh, for me, like, building up relationships with, with, uh, certain artists and PR, uh, people and management people that, um, it got to a point where I, I might be requested mm -hmm. to be the one to shoot. And, uh, so that was, that was very satisfying. Um, uh, even, even up to the p a point where I, uh, when I actually got to go on tour for a few days with cage, the elephant, mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, of work that they had seen of mine, uh, in general, but also of when I, uh, of shooting them many times. Um, and they, and they actually made the offer to have me come. Cool. Yeah. You enjoyed being on tour at least for a couple of days. I did. It was actually four days and, um, four days is was, fine. <laughs> yeah. Four days is good. I'd love for, I'd love to, I, I actually just really wanted to have that experience. It's mm. not, it's not something I can do normally because I have a, a, a day job. It, it sort of, the timing worked out, um, that I could basically do it while basically instead of going on vacation. <laughs> right. Because this you know? is, I guess, a big challenge for music photographers who wants to go on tour with bands, because I mean, who has the time to be one month away from the normal job just to be on tour? Yeah. I mean, there's some great people who are doing this. Um, mm. and I just, I don't know how they live, <laughs> um, and being on the road so much, but yeah. I think, uh, they, they've got their life set up in, the, in, 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 in order to be able to do that. Mm. Um, I can't, uh, I certainly cannot, but yeah, I, me, I, need, I, me neither, yeah. but I, <laughs> I, I interviewed some, some guys like, uh, uh, Kat Benzova, who is the photographer of Guns N' Roses, sure. and DC and Zach Whitford from Aerosmith and, uh, uh, other guys, David Bergman from Bon Jovi, and mm -hmm. they all say the same. I mean, it's it's really hard work for them because they're shooting the whole whole day and then the whole night, and then when the band goes to sleep, they have to edit the photos because <coughs> the band wants the photos next day. So I think that's really a tough job. I mean, uh, thinking about doing this for a year or two in a row, I mean, that's that's crazy. The um, yeah, when I was on on that tour, they uh, uh, I was. 
hanging out a lot with Cage's um, tour uh, photographer, and um, I, I th- yeah, that definitely was that kind of pace. And uh, what was nice for me is I didn't have to provide anything to them. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was, he had was, to. Yeah. So, um, he had to deliver. So, yeah. Um, but that was, uh, I think for me, the, uh, I, I, I think the one, one of the, one of the sort of the best things you can do as a music photographer is to be mm. in that situation. Uh, you, you really capture, uh, artists m- much more completely than obviously than if you just got first three songs first and three songs, shooting exactly. in a pit with 30 other people. Mm, I um, agree. So how would you describe a normal day now for you at the Rolling Stone magazine? So you wake up at what, six, you said, and then <laughs> yes. you, you come back from the office at 10 p.m. Um, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> I mean, um, I f- uh, there are some days where it's not as long, but... Um, like Saturdays and Sundays? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, we, the last couple of weekends we've been working... Um, and uh, just to to get the close the close of the magazine right, mm. it's um, it, there's so many more pages now and so many more um, photos in the in the magazine that it's uh, it's the clo- the the clo- magazine close um, is taking a lot longer, mm. and so it's kind of a shift for us. Um, but yeah, typical day I'm there usually. It's it's shameful. I, I'm usually there at eight. I'm not supposed to be there till ten, but. Um, I usually go in early, uh, to have a couple hours where no one's bugging me and can do a lot of work, whether it's, you know, some dedicated research for a story. Mm -hmm. Um, we often have meetings about stories that are coming up. There's no typical day. I might be on the phone with, um, some artist management to try and work out a date to photograph them and then trying to find a photographer for those locations in those days. Um, it, it dev- never stops. We do a lot of, we have to do a lot of our own, um, invoicing now. Um, and that's, that's kind of a pain, uh, <laughs> but, uh, that takes up a good part of the day. Um, yeah, it's not typical at all. I mean, it's, um, and usually, uh, they're quite late too. Um, and I mean, that's, uh, I haven't actually been shooting quite as much, um, with the, the, since they've been relaunching the magazine the last few months, mm. uh, uh, because my schedule has been so difficult and so dedicated to this change. So Let's see, yeah. Hopefully it will, uh, change again. So you will have some I, time to, to go and shoot that. So, um, as you know, my listeners are concert photographers. So I got a lot of questions, um, about Rolling Stone. And so therefore, oh. if you don't mind, I would go just through them oh, in right. no particular order. And, uh, because I think they, uh, they are great questions and, and, uh, they will help my listeners a lot. Yeah. Are you, these are questions from your listeners? Yes. Oh, excellent. Yes. Yes. Let's so, do this. Yeah. So I, I have a dedicated, passionate concert photography community yeah. and, um, everyone was looking forward to this interview because everyone said, oh, Rolling Stone. We need to know how to get in there. So I just have some couple of questions for you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, so for almost everyone, um, getting published in Rolling Stone. So this is uh, a dream come true. And I see you kind of a a gatekeeper to paradise, so to speak. (laughs) (laughs) So the pressure is on you. No, just kidding. Um, so, so do you have any tip on how to get published? Is there anything that, uh, people can do to kind of, I think there is no shortcut, but what would be the best approach to get the photos published? No, there isn't a shortcut. I think, um, you know, this is a very tough question. I, I, I know, I know. That I, it's, <laughs> and, um, I think it's clearly, um, being very good at what you do, um, is very important. Um, and being very present very often, Mm-hmm. Um, and shooting very often to the point where your very excellent work cannot be ignored, um, and you your work gets noticed beyond you know your 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 circle of um, influence. And um, but also, I, I think it's important to keep t- 
to take note of the kind of artists that uh, Rolling Stone covers in a in on mm-hmm. uh, a big way. Um, you know, a lot of the times they're very uh, there's there's sort of the um, the, the top uh, charting kind of artists, you know, and this is not necessarily my my favorite kind of music, um, but say like Harry Styles and. Camilla Cabello and Taylor Swift and so you know if you look at the magazine there's 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 live music photography of these artists that would appear in stories about them um and those are very hard shows to shoot I, I I think it's um I think some people get access but it's usually front of house for those uh for those very big shows there's certain photographers that do get better access um mm-hmm. In some cases, it's Kevin Mazur. Um, and so Kevin's work is available through Wire Image, through Getty. And so it's, you know, if he's in the, he's, you know, in the only guy in the pit and everyone else is in the front of the house, it's, you know, and, and we're researching who has what, mm. um, you know, that, that's, that's, um, you know, for those kind of enormous kind of events, uh, you know, it, we'll probably use someone like Kevin's because the work's really mm-hmm. great, and he's he's got the, the better access. So, mm. but um, so, but f- so yep. this would mean that uh, the photographers don't get access through Rolling Stone, but through other S- agencies or magazines. S- and some no, no. Sometimes they do. Um, okay, but I think for if we were doing something specific, there's been definitely moments when we when we were doing something specific on a on right. A, a band and we were making we were sending the photographer themselves right right um rather than you know uh trying to find images after the fact mm. you know i see uh and if we were sending someone then we can all, often sort of negotiate that access um and um you know i think uh like when you two was in south america we were doing some coverage and we were able to to um I think get some better access. Mm. Um, but it's, you know, but, you know, I, I think it's probably more realistic to start thinking about sort of more me- medium level bands that might, uh, have, uh, end up getting coverage. I know like, uh, not to say that, uh, you know, like, like a band, like say, um, Portugal, the man mm. who's having a great year. Um, you know, they're, they're, I know a lot of people have shot them and, um, uh, um, In- including myself i was starting I, with them like i don't know seven or eight years ago when they were in in vienna and no, I, I also did an interview with uh with sack the the bass player on my podcast and the funny thing is back in the interview uh, we were talking and uh, i did uh, a portrait shooting with them and they said this was the first professional portrait shooting and they were so nervous because they didn't know what to do and it was the same for me so it was the first uh, photo shooting uh, of a professional band oh, so cool. it was kind of uh, yeah it was was a nice nice thing and so every time they're playing in vienna we are uh, we are meeting and uh, i'm shooting them nice but so here's the here's the here's a, an example then i mean if i was doing it uh, we, we, we we did a, a, a small feature on them earlier mm-hmm. this year and or late last year i forget and so uh we did a portrait of them while they were in los angeles um, and part of the artwork of the story was going to require, uh, some live, um, music, of, uh, but, uh, some live shots. But in that, in that kind of scenario, we'd be, we, we'd really only need the most recent. Mm. So, so what do I do? I mean, I, I do go to the agencies to, to, to search. Um, but also I try and find out who are the photographers who have been shooting um shooting this band uh and shooting them well and so i mean i might uh try and search on instagram and things like that see who's, who's who shot the most recent shows if if so I, I using at, hashtags on instagram to find yeah them or look and i look at their tour dates and i see mm. what cities and i'm like oh i know i know that person in in denver i know this person in la and i just mm. check to see if they've been around i mean this is quite a lot of work for an image that's probably going to run you know not very big mm. so sometimes it's it is just easier to to go to the agencies you know um but in this case i uh i know that um their own their own tour photographer is really great uh mm. photographer um mcclay and um a guy from that, australia huh? That's right. That's right. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
and but also uh, Pune Ghana, who I think you've yeah. uh, interviewed, mm. so, and I know that she had been. Uh, she was touring with them around. too. Yeah, so we we used one of her photos. Ah, cool. So that's so that's part of just you know just the regular for an image that's going to run you know sh- uh, with apologies very small, uh, but that's there was like definitely a lot of mm. steps of you know, trying to, trying to make, try and have the best photo in the magazine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So does it make sense to email you or call your office and say, Hey, that's my portfolio. Have a look at it. Um, absolutely. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely, uh, something that you should do. It's very, I think calling doesn't work <laughs> mm-hmm. as well. Uh, <laughs> Not because, now as uh, you're all, the only guy in the office. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, already, uh, Matthias, already I'm, I'm, I'm getting, uh, you know, between uh, 30 and like a hundred emails each day. Yeah. This is what are, I, w- I wanted to ask. How many that emails are, do you Yeah. Get? There are, are promos either for not just for live music, you know, cause we do, we do, uh, if you look through the magazine, like there are, it's, there's not a, well, there is, there's more now in the, in the bigger version mm. of the magazine of live music. Um, but it's not just that it's portraiture mm. it's news photography it's uh um photo illustrations and so there's we have to sort of know who's doing what everywhere and mm. um and these are all the people that are reaching out so it's um it's sometimes very hard to to communicate as best as i'd love to where i when i see somebody's work that uh, oh yeah that could work and i just i i save uh, the link or mm. you know and you never know what's going to happen. I th- definitely, there's photographers that I've really enjoyed uh, for years and only gotten to use them years later. Mm. Um, so people shouldn't get too frustrated if they send you an email and they don't get a reply. No, definitely, it's part of the it's part of the gig. It's a really rough, you know. It's really being a, a music photographer. It's uh, as all of you listening know. It is it is a crazy hustle. Mm. And it's very competitive. Um, it's for, uh, you know, and de- well, definitely there's Rolling Stone's not the only place to send your work to. There's uh, definitely other sources. Um, but if you're sending your link or an email out, I think it should just, you shouldn't necessarily expect a, a reply right mm. away, but just to know that someone's looking especially from me anyway, I definitely have a look. Um, but, uh, often I can't, uh, reply because then it becomes like a conversation and it's, um, I, that I, that I don't often have time to, right. to have. Right. But if I, if I get a sense like over, over a period of time, like there's this guy in, uh, you know, in Vienna, who's, who's kind of doing these great shows. Um, uh, uh, next time I need someone in that area, which is not, um, out of the, out of the ordinary, um, I will, ha- I will, um, I will, I will have someone in Vienna. So you, you have, the, you have your contact now in, in Vienna, right? <laughs> I do now. Yeah, man. <laughs> no, this, this, this would be also a question. So do the photos have to be taken from, from photographers in the U S because, uh, no. that's, uh, you know, you're based in New York and I guess you're not, uh, promoting like photos from an artist who is also playing in the U S which is obvious, uh, yeah shooting them somewhere else. So for example, I was shooting once the Rolling Stones in Vienna for Rolling Stone magazine, Germany. Um, but you wouldn't be interested in a, in a concert shot of the Rolling Stones from Vienna, I guess. It, we, we, we would uh, be interested. It, it, it's, um, it doesn't matter. I think, okay. um, it was unless we were doing a story specifically about, mm-hmm a particular date they were doing. I, I know that often when we do like a, a tour review or show review, um, uh, there might be a writer, like for instance, uh, this happened a lot. I think it was the, um, who was it? Uh, Dan Auerbach in his, uh, his recent tour, uh, the, the writer just happened to be in Seattle and saw a show in Seattle. So it was going to be a lot easier to shoot him in LA mm. or in New York. Um, but we we uh, tried to find someone in Seattle. Um, I think actually we didn't find anyone, uh, or we did find, but they were they were not available. Um, and we still ran pictures from LA. But it's that's that's what I mean. It's it, yeah. It, sometimes it needs to be very specific to to um, 
to a, a particular date. Um, but oftentimes we just need sort of rad photos of that are cool. That's that are, you that's know, great to know because yeah. I thought that's already limiting for all the guys outside of the U.S. No, to get into. It. I, I I think um, I there was a recent uh, feature on the, for instance, the Rolling Stones that uh, um, that we were doing, um, and the think the the main image that ran as a spread, a live photo, came from a European date, mm -hmm. a European show. Okay, um, I see. Um, and and that way that came about was it was from a photographer who's quite gifted at at um, sneaking a, a, a long lens uh, into the crowd. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and and um, so that made it sort of a better photo. I see. And just uh, being curious, are you guys connected to Rolling Stone Germany in any way, or is are these two different, you know, publishers? It's different. Uh, they basically the uh, foreign um, editions of Rolling Stone are. I think they license the use of the name, mm. um, but they do pick up content from us. Okay. Rather than the other way around, and then so translate it maybe. In correct. Yeah. Ah, so they okay. they they look through what the when we close an issue they look through and they're like oh we would like to do this this and this. Mm, I see. I see. And so uh, that relationship I think is. Uh, still the same now with the, the new change. Mm, I see. Yeah. So Lisa uh, is asking, what are your selection criteria for photos? So you say they had to be red, they had to be awesome, but <laughs> are there any specifics you are personally looking after in a photo? So what makes a, a great life image for you? I, the question. I, um, well, I think um, there's different there's different uh, needs based on how an image is going to be used. Sometimes, um, you know, if I need uh, just a, a great live photo that's going to run across a spread, it, it, I think mm -hmm. just the emphasis more is on, on, on the, it being an excellent photograph itself, you know, okay. just on its own. Uh, I think a lot, there's a lot of very commercial, good commercial music photography that's done that exists. Um, solely to represent the artist on stage that is shot very clearly, very plainly, uh, that you could see them well, and it's a good representation of them, even though on its own might be sort of a boring photograph. Mm. But we often, we often use these images um, because you want to you, you see the artist at work, you know? And um, so maybe the, a better photograph it might, might exist where you don't see their face too well or, you know, and, um, I'm probably not describing this well, but, uh, uh, but it, it has, it has be. to speak to you in, in a way and it has to fit to the, to the usage in the, in the magazine. Yeah. I mean, there's some usage that is, is, uh, it, it might be somewhat small to moderate size where, uh, it, it could just be a Q and a with uh, the singer of a certain band. So you need to see him, you know, and you want to see him on stage and mm. so you, you know, maybe the having uh, the microphone in his face is not going to work in that right, right. in that case. And you know, and so it's uh, it's really hard to describe uh, a, a great answer to that question mm. because you know there there's a lot of images that I might shoot myself that I would that I I I, I would consider to, to be not great pictures, but they'd be be useful as a in those in those situations mm -hmm. um so, but, yeah. how is it working then when you're shooting you're choosing your photos right me yes okay. i am so, so that's that's easier then <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, and um, another another idea just popped up uh, would it make uh sense or is it easier for you guys if people on instagram starting to tag their concert photos with like the rolling stone hashtag or is this going nowhere because <laughs> no one is looking um, at it <clears throat> i I don't know. I don't run the, I don't run the account, okay. the, the Instagram account. Um, I don't, I think that probably will end up being, uh, a mess. I think there's so many people <laughs> that do, that will be tagging Rolling Stone with things that are not relevant at mm. all. Uh, right. so you can certainly, um, you can certainly, um, tag perhaps the editors. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm the only one in print right now, but there's two editors, um, on the online side ah. and they uh you know i 
I don't know how, personally how they'd appreciate it. <laughs> that, <laughs> to get um, thousands of photos. Because I know there are some people who do tag me in their, in their images and it's sort of constant. And, um, and often it's, it's not work that is relevant to the magazine. It's, it might mm. be very good work, but it's um, artists that we are not covering. And uh, do you appreciate and, this, or is it more like a hassle to see uh, all the photos popping up in your feed? I, who tag you? I I want to say I really appreciate the the positivity of this particular podcast, um, and uh, and I know that there's a, a really strong community, and so I don't want to be too negative, but I I think it can be a little frustrating, especially right. if. Um, Uh, if the work really isn't anywhere near as good as it should be, mm. or if it's an if it's a, an artist that's not relevant to the magazine, and I mean, I mean, and I mean, there's a lot of artists on the way up that that certainly would be, uh, you know, relevant to to the magazine soon. But I'm talking about people that artists that are just not not at all what we cover, mm. and. Yeah. So, so let's let's keep it like this for yeah. Let's keep it like this for the mm. listeners. You can, if you want to, let's tag Sasha once in a photo. He will have a look at it and then stop. Once it again. in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, it's good to know. Like, if there's someone um, in a particular c uh, city who is just very consistent and very strong, doing mm. very strong work consistently, it's. It's enormously helpful for any editor at the magazine to know about this person, mm. and they really should know about that about that person. Um, some cities, um, you know, like L.A., London, New York, Chicago, we probably know a bunch of people, and so. But if you're somewhere else in a smaller in a smaller um, a regional area. Uh, you never know. There's some tours that start, you know, uh, what is it? Didn't you two start their tour in Tulsa and Maybe. Uh, Oklahoma? And mm. um, so, you know, it's, uh, you never know. We, we've, um, we've met uh, people in, you know, small, smaller areas uh, in Virginia and so on, because we needed to find someone local uh, for a, for a tour opener that was happening in their town. And, And we did some research. We found someone really great and it worked out really good. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for the offer. So, uh, yeah. so pe people can take you once in a while. Yeah. That's, that's, and that's certainly um, you can email me and I think a, a, a good, a, a good tip for you, especially is in the subject line of your email, hmm. it should be uh, your name and the city you're in. I, I can't tell you how many times people will send an email and this information is not part of the uh, email because if I need someone in New Orleans, you know, and I, I don't, I don't know as many live photographers or mm -hmm. portrait photographers in New Orleans. Um, it might, it's, it's, it could be very easy and easily solved by me just searching my emails. Right. And, and if that, uh, the, the city name is there, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to find you. Yeah. That's, that's a great tip. I would yeah. have never thought of it. I would say photos. <laughs> no, I, it's, it's, it, you know, if you, you got to definitely imagine yourself trying to get, get attention. To sit in your chair. And... Literally in a, an insane amount of emails, mm. you know, and it, so it may not get seen, the, you know, that day, but uh, honestly, I, I search my emails for city names all the time because I okay. know people's included. Um, And I've I've definitely been reminded of some very strong uh, work um, cool. by doing that. Perfect, thanks. So Sebastian would have a question about uh, payment. How much do you pay for concert photos? So I guess this uh, totally depends if you uh, have your own photographers being there shooting or if you get it from Getty or how big the image is, if it's a double spread, a single spreader. <laughs> Correct. It's, it's usually, if we're picking it up, uh, it's going to be based on the space it runs. Mm. Um, uh, the rates may vary based on the section of the magazine, but generally, I know you, I know you probably would love to be specific uh, <laughs> in what you hear. <laughs> but um, uh, I'll first start off by, but there's certain uh, agencies that we might have a subscription deal with. Right, and so it's very hard to 
exactly. to give you the direct uh, value on that, I think right. there's a there's a there's a, a a larger payment that covers a certain period of right, time. Right, because you're paying the agency, and then the agency pays the photographer to a certain extent. So right. it so, depends so on based the... on how many we use. It could mm-hmm. be, uh, you know, it could, it could really range. If we're picking up from an individual, it's 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 based on space, and um, if it's if it's like uh like under a quarter page it, it might range from uh like 75 to 100 dollars i mm. think quarter page if it's truly quarter page could be 150 okay uh 225 200 for a half page that kind of thing so just still a decent price for today's magazines i guess i think it's pretty standard for magazines and I, I know if, if if you're out there listening and think that that sounds really low. It, it's it. I would agree, but it's uh, it's at least kind of you're still weird. paying. You could could also yeah, say we get sure. everything for free and you get the credit there, which you know, some I, people doing. I I uh, I would I would never do that. <laughs> there are some you know if, if I'm getting an image from you know from the from the band's management you know they they that they have their own tour photographer then they're releasing an image to us. It's there's not usually a payment because it's right. coming from management. Um, uh, I, I get offers a lot of photographers who are trying to break through and, and are offering, uh, offer to work for free. Mm. And it's, um, it's, a, it's upsetting, uh, because, uh, to, no matter if, if they're amazing or not, I, 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 it's not something that I would do. Mm. I, I, even if, if it, if their work was great and I wanted to try them, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest they work for free. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not from us anyway. Right. Uh, another question from Dominic is, uh, do you guys have a big room with all the negatives and photos? So how do you store <laughs> the photos? I think it's now on, on hard drives, but do you still have negatives or, or have you started to scan them or how is this working? Um, yeah, I guess you're talking about, um, archival kind of archive, images. Yeah. yeah, there's, we do, there's a room, there's a room of pictures. It's not what you think. There's no negatives. <laughs> no secret um, room locked in the basement somewhere. <laughs> there, it's not a secret, but it is locked. Uh, okay. It's they, no, this is, there's a collection of images that exist, but it's, it's really more from, um, like promo images sent by, um, record labels throughout the years, mm-hmm. you know, the, um, uh, and because the images that, uh, uh, historically in Rolling Stone that have been used, it's not, they're not images that we could use, um, again, without licensing them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, even those images, those promo images, they were, they might've been promotional images at the time that we received them, you know, uh, but they are not almost certainly not promotional images anymore or can be treated as, as such. So even if it's really more of a research tool and a reference uh, tool um, and those, so if I look at a folder, if we're doing a story on uh, Grand Funk Railroad, uh, I, there's a, we have a folder for that, but it's like a promo image from their, from their label. Um, often there's a, a photo credit on the corner and that's the person who I'll try and call. Mm, okay. Not the label. And, uh, um, and so, and if there's no photo credit, I have to do a lot of research and find out who shot those. It's not something I can just use. Mm. Um, they, they don't own those, the, the copyright to those pictures. So the moving forward, uh, for, with the new owners of the magazine work that's assigned by the magazine, uh, there is a shared rights contract we have. And so there, they, they do hold on to a couple of images. Um, but uh, that's yeah, that's through uh, that's stored on a, um, like a web dam mm. that I could search. Okay, cool. Which we haven't really used yet on on the Rolling Stone mm-hmm. side, but mm. that's coming soon. Cool. And one last question from listener Jeff. I don't know if you know this. Um, is it true that Mick Jagger threatened to sue Rolling Stone over the magazine's name when tension ran strong during the Some Girls tour in 1978? <laughs> <laughs> I um I don't I think I mean as far as I know um that he I think he threatened to sue uh it was 1968 
Okay. Um, Maybe you then, know more then. <laughs> it was shortly, I think it was probably shortly after the magazine came out because the, um, um, and I think that, that the, the, I don't know if it was Mick directly, but as the Stones sent a um, cease and desist letter. But in fact, the Stones got their name from Muddy Waters' song, as, mm. and that's what I think uh, Rolling Stone magazine have always claimed too. That okay. that that was more the influence. But but Mick and um, and the founder Jan Wenner have a great um, friendship. Um, I think it was a bit tumultuous over the years, but it's uh, but I think by the seventies they were everything was okay. Was okay, and, okay, nothing happened. <laughs> I mean, I no, and um, and you know, I think uh, like early on, um, I don't think I've ever seen a copy, but there was a Rolling Stone, uh, the, the only Rolling Stone that it's ever existed in in England, uh, was started by by Mick. It was run by Mick, mm-hmm. um, and that was before seven. That was definitely before seventy eight. Okay, I, after it folded, I, 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 I don't know what happened. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the info. <laughs> um, yeah, so how do you personally see the music photography business in the next 10 years or so or five years? So you already mentioned that uh, being a concert photographer nowadays is, is really a hustle and it's it's hard. There's a lot of competition going on. Uh, everyone yeah. wants to to be a photographer, not only music photographer, but it, I think it, the same holds true for wedding photographers. and and every other fields in photography. So what's your personal opinion? How, how do you think is the business changing? Probably also in, in aspect of, you know, rights grabbing contracts or bands just uh, uh, locking out any photographers uh, like, like Jack White. They have their own two photographers with them, with them who can shoot. Um, do you have any opinion on this? And how, how do you see it for, for your own um, career as a music photographer? I, yeah, this is a, this is a, this is a very hard question. Um, and yeah, you just talking about Jack White. I know that, um, that's kind of, um, that's very frustrating, although his photographer is quite good. <laughs> and we just, we just finished uh, the issue. We just closed has, a a story on Jack White. Um, and so that's, I think we're using a couple of images by that, by that, the, that photographer. Um, because, there are no other pictures from others, right? At least from the there last are, tour, there, maybe? There are some that uh, for a couple of appearances that were that were um, in smaller mm. uh, smaller venues, and I think one of them was in the daytime too, so it was a lot okay. easier to to get pictures. But, um, but we were considering all of it. Uh, we were considering mm. those two. Um, but the future, I don't know, because it's so... It's so the, the, um, I think there's going to be a huge shift um, in the kind of work that gets done. I can tell you just because I think even when I started, which is not that long ago, um, the accessibility of a, of a, of a powerful enough camera to shoot in particular spaces in particular situations were not as accessible as they are now um, in terms of the cost of the, mm. the gear, I mean, right. and, um, and so it just, it just, uh, it's, it's, it's incredible the amount of people that you might see, uh, shooting on a given night. Um, and I, I, I think that it, at, at sort of the smaller club level that will not change, but, um, it, I can't see, I can't see everyone sticking to, to this as a business <laughs> Um, if, if there's so much competition and, um, there's so many rights grabbing contracts, it's exactly, so and, it and might just the, be, sorry. And also the limitation, like uh, just shoot from the pit, from the far right or from the far left. So you, you cannot get yeah, really I great fi- photos. No, I find it very unsatisfying, uh, myself and, um, and, and certainly, and even like, even just from front of house, I, it's, mm. it's, if it's something that, um, that's offered to us, I, I generally won't do that myself. Mm. I don't, you know, um, it's, it's not so, that much fun just standing there. It's like for old man standing with a monopod, no, <laughs> 300 like millimeter it. lens. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I, I, and I even, even, I mean, even first three songs in, in the, the most amazing sh- show you can be in, uh, can, can sound exciting, but it's, it's not a great representation of what's possible. Mm. And so I think if you're really interested in, 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 
in um, uh, making really excellent photo- uh, photographs, um, y- you might just try and connect with the bands directly mm-hmm. and uh, and tour with them and uh, build a portfolio that it, that's not just shooting in front of them um, from the pit. And and um, I think those that that's those are the work that's really going to stand out to publications. Um, mm-hmm. And that certainly would be a goal of mine if I if I had the time to do more of is is really is really avoid shooting you know first three um, is is really trying to try and get myself in a situation um, where I was going to be able to capture other kinds of moments. Mm, and that's a lot easier if you're uh, going to smaller clubs or shooting not the most famous bands because the more famous the bands are, the more restricted it Absolutely. gets the more complicated it gets you have to sign the contracts and everything i i mean for me uh uh 100% uh, and also i mean it's 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 so much more interesting um you uh being in a smaller club it's, and even going for one band and discovering another and who've just been around for a few years and they're so hungry and they're so talented but really raw And you, you're you're so much closer to the, the the very source of their of the inspiration that caused them to get started. It's just it's really invigorating just to be there, mm-hmm. um, but to be able to capture something uh, in a photo um, that reflects that, uh, I think is wildly more interesting. Mm, so how how important is the local music scene in in New York for you and the the community there? It's uh, it's it's vital it's 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 vital um and they're they're um it's it's even though venues for years have been closing uh other venues open and they it's sometimes you have to go a little further to uh to to see them but um uh it's it's exhilarating um and the the the, the local community that shoots the very big shows here they're They're at these places too, um, and uh, the the local photographers uh, in New York. I I, I think the, I think they're amazing and uh, very supportive of each other. Mm. I th- it's it's not. Uh, I don't feel like it's uh, there's any kind of nasty competitiveness. I, I'm. I you just you just uh, I think you had. Um, Andreas on the uh, was it the last yeah the uh, last one maybe at the, at the time we're talking with yeah, is, is the, the last, last one. one and uh he's a great example um of someone who's just making beautiful work and uh, a joy like a joy to see when you walk through the door and and uh, amongst others that if like if i see if i go to a show and i see him there i'm like oh i'm in the right place mm, I, awesome. i definitely made the right i made the right choice <laughs> <laughs> tonight awesome awesome yeah and i think that that's what's all about and i've, I've seen this also this is episode 56 now i guess and uh, i Congrats. talked with all those great guys from all around the world and i have the feeling that this i mean it's a niche but this music photography community is is so supportive and helpful at least most of them Uh, so that's that's really a special thing, I guess, that we have going on there. I, I don't know if if there is any other photography field where you have such a community and bonding together and living their their passion for music and photography and everything. Mm. That's that's really cool. So, what advice would you give to your twenty year old self? Would you do something different? I have to. I mean. Would I? I don't know. <laughs> I I was I'm just I I uh, I know that you. This is a question that you ask uh, people, so I should be more prepared. Uh, you don't have to be I, prepared. I, thinking myself at 20, I don't know I, if I would have changed much of anything. Mm. Uh, I certainly would have. I would love to tell myself to open an IRA uh, <laughs> account uh, then, and uh, because it's it's uh it, it being a being a starving artist uh in your 20s and 30s is very charming but uh but not later <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly i think that's this is really um an important issue like the financial issue and um i'm now 38 and now i'm also starting to kind of realize that maybe i have should uh started earlier by saving 
money or doing some other investments. But at, at least it's better later than never, I would say. <laughs> yes, and I mean, and I mean, I, I uh, um, but in terms of going back to a twenty, my twenty-year-old self, I mean, I, I very easily could answer this question and say, you know, go, you know, start going to more shows then, um, and with a camera, I, I, I was going to shows then, and I just never felt like that was a role for myself, um, but I wouldn't necessarily change it. I mean, I, it, I think probably be nice to have a. Um, more experience and more of an archive, but uh, you know, mm. the the value of uh, the, of that is it, it can't be underestimated. But it really depends on who I would have been interested in shooting. I mean, um, a lot of the people I'm shooting now, um, uh, I it, it may be valuable to have photos of them in the future, but uh, you never know. Mm -hmm. Like I'll wait ten years and find out. Mm -hmm. No, um, I totally, totally get it because I was also starting getting into concert when I was 13 years old and I was into death metal and so all these great bands like Cannibal Corpse and Carcass and D-Side. And um, I, I, I do not know who they uh, are. That doesn't matter. It's, it's, uh, it's death, death trash metal, um, yeah. you know, grounding all the time. But uh, yeah. still, I mean, I started uh, taking photos of concerts uh, at the age of 28. So yeah. would I have started back then? I mean, this would be awesome because then I would also have a huge body of work already. But as you said, I mean, uh, it doesn't matter to regret anything what would be in the past because anyhow, you cannot change it. And it's just a, a waste of time yeah, to, uh, to think about it. At least that's my I, opinion. I believe, in, I believe in, you know, I mean, obviously referring to your values and, and, uh, uh, and you know, going down and living a good life as a good person and and whatever wherever you end up with that is uh, hopefully the right choice hopefully uh you know you'll you'll get your reward another way mm, yeah <laughs> so do you have any dreams are there still any dreams for you i love uh i'd love i'd love to i'd love to shoot more than i i have been lately mm. um i don't know what my future is with rolling stone um at the moment, uh, there's there's a lot of shifts happening. There's um, someone else coming in a few weeks uh, that I'm going to be working with. Okay. And um, so I I'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to be able to 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 do more tours mm -hmm. if uh, if that ever I get the time to chance to do that. Um, but um, no, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I really, uh, I could, maybe, maybe I'm not, I don't, maybe I don't, dream, I don't dream big enough. Um, I kind of, I'm kind of a content person. Uh, maybe becoming the owner of Rolling Stone. The owner. <laughs> yeah. The new owner is, a uh, is, um, is, uh, is, uh, a, a very wealthy man. I don't have the, um, uh, I don't have the cash <laughs> to does, get it does from him. Does he have anything to do with music? <laughs> Probably you not. You know, I think not specifically. Uh, his that's not part of his history, but uh, I know he's a uh, he's a really big uh, fan of music. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I spoke to him about this, uh, and it's not for me to say which what his favorite. Uh, favorites are, but sure. definitely it's uh, relevant, completely relevant, mm. and. And so, yeah, it's, he's definitely injected a lot of energy into um, looking uh, at, into the future mm. as it regards to coverage of certain artists. Mm, that's that's great sure. because what, yeah. what I hear a lot is like, you know, all these festivals in Europe, they are funded by some investment company that they're not interested at all in, in music. So it's just about making money. And this would be well, a you know, <laughs> it's about <laughs> money. I know. <laughs> Still cool. So let's do a short Q and A in the end of the interview. I'll ask you seven short questions and uh, please answer them as quickly as possible. Nikon or Canon or another brand? I've been shooting Nikon since I was twelve years old. Okay. So what's your favorite camera model right now? Uh, I use a, a D seven fifty. If and uh, it, I've never actually. I just so if, if this means anything to anyone, I've never actually owned a new camera. I've always bought used. Okay. Uh, because 
it's it is expensive but uh i've i've i i found that to be a great uh all purpose kind of uh photor- uh camera for for concerts mm, the lot of of music photographers i interviewed used the 750 i'm still shooting the 700 so yeah that's a great camera mm-hmm. too uh, if you can only choose one lens for concert photography, which one would it be? Well, I will definitely, I, I like, I like being close. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, it would be 35, 35, 1.8. So you're always being in the first row next to the stage. I, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like to be up front. I mean, I, I've started to really enjoy the, of the, uh, 50 millimeter, um, as well, but uh, I, I, I'm often too close mm. for that. So. Okay. Favorite record of all time? Oh my God. I actually, oh, I, I knew you were going to ask this question. <laughs> but um, And you knew that's the hard know, one because everyone is that's, struggling. That's the hard it. one because I don't really think about it that way. I, I um, There's there's albums that have been very important to me in my, in my life uh, and because I just listen to music all the time that, that like what I'm, what we're obsessed with at home right now is, uh, and I've been, is, um, uh, Viva Roxy music, the live album. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the soundtrack to streetcar named desire, which is incredible. But, um, I, if I have to choose a favorite, it might be from my youth, uh, as the uh, first joy division. Okay album okay you know. is there any music photographer you admire i know so many and i admire so many um so i could never i could never pick one maybe three um, or four I, who are um, the most important I, to you I, I i i love the i love the local crew in new york andreas that you had mm. on and um Ebru, who you had on yes. um <laughs> Uh, but even like, uh, and, and, uh, shit show Dave, who mm. you had on is in LA is, uh, just really having a moment <laughs> right now. And, uh, and just really finding his voice. Uh, he has been, but it just feels like it's sort of f- super focused right now. Mm. And it's really interesting to see what he's doing. Um, but I, I, I love Daniel Tepetti, who's here in New York, okay. uh, Tony Ghana, who you had on. Yes. There's. There's CJ Harvey, who's in Philly um, and who's constantly on tour with some amazing bands. Um, I'm leaving out so many people, mm. but uh, uh, I, I mean, I, I, my, my great affection and admiration for Danny Clinch can't be, can't be, uh, uh, can't go unmentioned. Um, I've been a fan of his work since... 1993 Mm, (laughs) um and he never disappoints and uh, i've gotten to know him and he's very generous with his Mm. um his time and his uh his words i I need to um, get him on the show though trying hard to get him on the podcast have you have you have you reached out um not yet i'm a little bit hesitant but i think now after about 60 episodes i can try don't be (laughs) don't be hesitant (laughs) He's, yeah, he's great. And, and historically as well, photographers, I mean, like when I've got being at Rolling Stone, I, I, I mean, you, you, you even had Neil Preston right. on, who is a black, a black I, I've, I've dealt with him often. He's and, an awesome guy <laughs> with yeah. awesome and stories. There, yeah. And, um, uh, but even, you know, the, the late, the late Jim Marshall, mm. I, I got to know before he died oh. and, uh, and, uh, just too, too many to mention. The, I mean, if you look, especially from that era, if you look at got the work of uh, like Jim Marshall and Baron Wallman, for, you know, the first mm. staff photographer for Rolling Stone, the, the the frames and the quality of those frames are so exquisite and compared to maybe others that will go unnamed. But like, it's um, I think if you're if you're if you're a photographer of music at all in any era, if you look, for, if you look to those guys, like that's the standard, mm. like if you're that you're trying to reach. Um, and if, uh, you know, that, and, and the goal, and that's, you know, that's what you're working towards. Nice. Your coolest concert you have shot so far. Um, 
I've been to a lot of very, very, <laughs> very great concerts, but um, I, I think I, I have to mention because it's I, I've. I've I've answered this question before uh, from other people, and um, there's a, a great um, uh, band called Warm Doucher out of London, mm-hmm. who exists uh, as with members of uh, Fat White Family and um, Paranoid London, and they had come through town, uh, but did not did not have a work visa and did but did a show that sort of un sort of not called a show because they couldn't really <laughs> okay. do it officially because of the work visa. And it was in, it was, it was super late at night in a small club and with very few people in the room. And it was, I've never seen anything like it. It was unbelievable, which included some amazing spoken word and just, I, I, I it, it was truly unforgettable and kind of, it was almost like I was hallucinating during it. It was so good. Wow. <laughs> Cool. Uh, w- they, and they have, they have a new record out now too. Ah, uh, I need to check them out. Yeah. Uh, water or beer? Uh, um, I, uh, beer if I can have a <laughs> shot as well. <laughs> sure. And uh, yeah. which band is still on your concert photography bucket list? Um, I don't, I don't, I, I don't have a, I don't really have a, a bucket list like that. I, 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 I there's definitely, I don't really think about it that way. I, 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 I think whatever comes my way mm. and I get the chance to do it. Um, uh, that, that's what makes me really happy. I, uh, I, I'm not, I, I'm not, I don't have like a, a list I'm pining to do mm. cause I'm often, I often miss like some really great stuff because of my schedule. Um, so yeah, I try not to do that. Not yet. Anyway. I see. And as the last question, what, are your must have tips for someone who wants to start out as a photographer or especially a music photographer nowadays? I would, uh, I'm sure I'm repeating, um, with this advice, but it's, uh, to shoot as much as you can and to, uh, seriously don't sweat the, the, the big venues and the, the big artists, um, find your the local scene that that attracts you i think if you're honestly and also i think if you're shooting you know like a like a like a for instance like a new york underground kind of punk and post-punk uh uh vibe and that's not the music that you like or really appreciate it's i think it's good i think it's not worth doing Mm -hmm. i think you got to find also what really moves you and that that will inspire your work going forward um and certainly will inspire you to get out and and do as much as you can. Um, it's very easy to build a really good portfolio over, uh, uh, you know, a short period of time by doing that. But also I think it's not enough to represent your work as just having sort of occupied the space mm. of being at a show. I think uh, there's so much work I see that it, where people are just showing me that they like the, basically it's just evidence that they were there. Um, I think if there, I think there's as much work that needs to be on the actual photography end of it. It needs to be a beautiful photograph, mm. um, and I find that lacking in some in 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 some uh, work I've seen. Uh, um, that would be maybe number one. Mm. Just make great photographs first, and then don't worry about like the fact that you're shooting music. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sasha. So for everyone who wants to reach out uh, to you at Rolling Stone, you mentioned before an email address. Are you willing to give it here or is it of course. private? Yeah, of course. So no, not, it's not, not private not at all. Give your personal email. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, it's, not a, it's, it's not a problem. It's, uh, I mean, it's, I think it exists. I think uh, it exists out in the world, um, but it's my first and uh, first name dot last name okay. at rollingstone.com cool. Sasha dot Lekka at rollingstone.com awesome. um, I think it would be unwise to send uh, huge PDFs mm. uh, or or multiple images just in a body of, of work uh, in, a, in a body of the email yeah, is it better uh, to have a, a link, link to, oh, to, to portfolio or maybe a link would be good and d- a link that goes directly to the image to images mm-hmm. um 
you know, sometimes people send a link and it's to a copyright page okay. and then to a page of text. And I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> you know, and it could be, you know, I think uh, people might, they, they get overexcited and they like might send a link after every show they go to. Mm. I would not do that. I would, you know, every few months, there's a reminder of the work I do. I'm based here. You know, yes, and, and for the for the headline it. in the email, don't forget to say where you're at, your name and the city, right? It would be great. Yeah, it's and it's very, it's very, it's very, very useful. I mean, you can almost even not say anything at all, like <laughs> else, <laughs> you know, like I, you don't, um, Hi you know, a in lot the of subject. <laughs> yeah, and it, and there's and also you know I, and not just not not just Rolling Stone, but you know, go out and buy a magazine, you know, and and uh, and. Not not just to help them out, but also to look at the kind of work that they need mm. and the kind of work that they do, and and see and really be a uh, a very harsh judge of your own work. Uh, be ruthless. Uh, always, you know, can tell your work, tell yourself this is not. I'm not. You know, this is not good enough, and and that to, to to make you work harder. But look at where your work fits in, either at Rolling Stone or other magazines. And, and you might even make that reference in the email say, look, I saw that in your, uh, spotlight section mm. or whatever, uh, you know, um, uh, I do, I do similar work. Please take a look and, you know, and please don't be offended if you don't hear back, believe exactly. me, we're looking and, uh, and, 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 and archiving these emails so that I can search and, and find you next time. Thank you so much for these insights and great tips. I think they're really useful for people because, as I said, uh, for many, being published in Rolling Stone is uh, a dream coming true. So hopefully this podcast will help you to step one letter further uh, to your success at now knowing what to write in the email, who to write the email. And uh, yeah, and don't get frustrated too early if you don't hear back and just... Um, Yeah, get in contact constantly, but on a kind of a normal basis. Like as you said, every month the same is with Instagram. Don't just tag your photos that are not related with uh, Sasha's yeah, uh, personal profile. He will get crazy. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> no, we, we just want to point this out to you. No worries. So thanks so much again, Sasha, for, for your pre taking the precious time. I know you're super busy with your work and uh, I really appreciate it being such a great guest. No problem. It's actually a holiday today, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just chill out today. Or you're going a little bit later to the office. <laughs> Hopefully not. I'll check my I check my email like every few minutes. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, man. Bye. This was a brand new episode of the How to Become a Rockstar Photographer podcast. And before you go, I want to say a huge thank you. So here is where you can find me. I am Matthias Hombauer and basically all over the internet on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And you will find my blog at www.howtobecomearockstarphotographer.com. Share my podcast with your friends. Subscribe to iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher or Pocket Casts so that you don't miss any new episodes. And you can also find my free HDBarb podcast app for iOS and Android. I'll publish an interview once a week from the best music photographers on this planet to help you kickstart your concert photography career. And if you're awesome, please leave a review on iTunes. This will make my How to Become a Rockstar Photographer podcast more visible. And you can actively help to grow our concert photography community. The last place where you can check it out and get some additional value is my newsletter, which is howtobecomearockstarphotographer.com slash VIP. This is where I put content out before it hits my social platforms. So this is sort of the insider track. Leave me comments all over the internet. I'm tracking them down and try to answer every single one. So a huge thank you again for listening to my podcast and I'm looking forward to the next episode. I hope you will join me. In the meantime, go out and shoot some concerts. Rock on, Matthias.